All right, so um, let me start with the first one here. If I can have everybody's attention, let's talk about number one. So, um, so I think I think what we're going to do, because I, I I already can tell you what's going to happen here. I don't think that we're going to have time, probably, to get through all the problems, right? So what I'm going to do in the future sections today. I'm going to make a point of solving the later problems just slowly and carefully in those other sections so you can look at those later if you want to to see the answers to the other problems, okay? Um, so, because I think if I, if I do, if I do the, if I, if I do a couple of the solutions in each section, I, I'm only going to get about, you know, 15 minutes of video here. So I'll probably have about 15 minutes of video in the other sections too if, if patterns continue, right? So if I put that all together, if you watch the videos from the different sections, you'll see the answers to the other problems. Yeah? I'm gonna, that's it. I'm going to get as far as I can here, okay? So problem one were, was to calculate um, x cubed minus 2 over x plus 3. And so they did long division. Very good. And they got, let's see here. Um, so we bring down x times x squared times x gives us x cubed plus 3x squared. Very good. Take the difference, that gives us a minus 3x squared. Now, I mean, well, all right. I see you guys are, so I get uh, minus 3x squared, and then, okay, so then I do the minus 3x, that brings down minus 3x and minus 9x, which gives me this. Take the difference, that gives us 9x, bring down the 2, um, and then add 9, that gives me 9x plus 27. I subtract, I get minus 29. So problem one, they calculated x cubed minus 2 over x plus 3 is x squared minus 3x plus 9 minus 29 over x plus 3. This is correct. Very good. What does this mean, by the way? If you were to graph this, what would it mean? What would this mean? If you were to graph this, what kind of asymptote would you have? You'd, you'd have a, you'd have a, no, you'd have a, you'd have this, the graph would be a parabola. Like a, it would have a parabolic asymptote. So this is something I wouldn't test on, like graphing, because I think it's a little bit beyond the course, but this would have a parabolic asymptote. Okay. Which way would it be? The parabola, it would be up. It's an upward one. Okay, guys. So I need there to be like not talking right now, because otherwise I can't think. So this one here, part B. What do you guys think, right or wrong? Well, it's, it's right, but it might be wrong because I said to use transformations. So what's the thing about transformations? I need to see them, you know? <laughs> You're like, I had to show them. <laughs> I, hear, I hear, and I told you so. Okay, so there's the starting point is x, square root of x. And then, then we can flip it over like this, right? On the test, are we going to have to show you each? I give you the boxes probably on the test, you know? Well, if I don't give you the boxes, then I guess you got to show me it yourself, like I'm doing right now. Um, and then I shift, what, two to the left? Um, then what? And then we shift up three. So let's see here. If I did that right, this point should be minus two, zero, and then it, and it shifts up here to minus two, comma, three. That's where my vertex is, so... The graph looks something like this. And um, so again, I would say the answer is correct here. We just need to, you know, you want to show your steps if it's a transformation one. So I, I would try to give you the boxes or something. Um, honestly, the better way for me to graph the transformation things is just with like a quick multiple, cho multiple choice question where I say identify the graph. Yeah, yeah, you know, good. and that way you can use transformations to figure out the graph. That's really the best way to tr test the transformation material. You saw it in your homework a lot. Um, problem two didn't get up to the board, but let me do it. So here we have, we're factoring x to the fourth minus 16 times x squared plus 10x plus 1. How do we factor this? So you guys tell me. That's x squared minus 4, x squared plus 4. Complete the square on that thing x plus 5 quantity squared minus 24. So now the, the group that was doing this got that far. They, you guys got there. 
And actually, they got a little bit further because they figured out that that's actually x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 times ugh, x plus 5 plus the square root of 24, x plus 5 minus, oopsie, square root of 24. Poor planning on my part, right? So there you go. Now it is factored completely um, <laughs> over r. And then I said part b, graph it. <laughs> wow. It's kind of a doozy, isn't it? So what is square root of 24 is really close to 5, right? So uh, our critical numbers are something like uh, that's just a little bit, uh, a little bit positive. So like 5 minus the square root of 24 is really close to 0, a little bit positive. Then you got your 2 over here. You got your minus 2 over there. Um, this gives you a critical, uh, this is not the scale, but that, that one's way over here. Minus 5, excuse me, my bad. That's supposed to be minus 5 plus the square root of 24. Actually, that's a little bit negative. So minus 5 minus the square root of 24, that's about minus 10. Those are your critical numbers because there's, you know, this is prime in the middle. So you plug in the things, you got yourself. Oh, x squared plus 4, that's 2, right? x squared plus 4 is a prime factor. That is only 0 for plus or minus 2i. So it, it really doesn't play any, it doesn't contribute anything to the sign chart here. So they're all, um, they're all um, odd power, they're all just power 1, so it flips every time. And then the graph looks something kind of, sort of. Sorry, I'm hurrying a little bit here, but you know, we don't have a lot of time. It's positive on the ends. It's got to turn around, it's got to cross, it's got to turn, it's got to cross. So it looks something like that. And of course, we could be more careful. I have been more careful in lecture before, right? All right. Problem. Three, find the polynomial of least degree which has f of x less than or equal to zero and x-intercepts of minus three, zero, one, zero, five, zero, and a y-intercept of zero minus 15. Um, well, let's see here. Your x-intercepts, I think, are good. That is where they should be. So if I want minus 3, 0, I get x plus 3. If I want 1, 0, I get x minus 1. If I get, you know, 5, 0, I get x minus 5 for a factor. But let's think about this. I think that's where I'm going to have to depart from you guys, unfortunately. Whoever did this? Not, not you? Oh, them? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was like, <laughs> okay. That was a real not us, not <laughs> some kind of like joke, not us. Okay. All right. But, um. No, so this is mostly right, but the thing is, I have said here that f of x is less than or equal to zero, right? So let's think about, this is a new prop, for this section, this is a new problem, all right? Okay. This is a little bit tricky. We haven't done this in here yet. Let's think about this. If, is, look at your graph. Does this have f of x less than or equal to zero? Like, you know it doesn't, right? So how would you make f of x be less than or equal to zero? What would you have to do at these x-intercepts? What would you need to do? You'd need to you got to bounce off the x-intercept and stay negative. That's what you need to do. See, it's a little bit tricky. So the way to fix this is you go back up to your very good starting guess, right? And just add squares. Just add squares up here. Add squares like that. And then we can pretty much follow what you did, all right? But if you don't mind, I'm going to erase because, I wanna, you know. Well, my, my point is if you, want to keep, if you want to keep the graph negative, right, yes. then you can't cross the x-axis, right? But it's negative. You've got to stay on that side of the x-axis, which means we have to bounce off the x-axis logically, okay. right? I mean, I know that's tricky. That's a new idea for this section, right? So um, we also know that the y-intercept is minus 15. So what they did was, was great, minus 15. A times plug in 0, right? So we get... Uh, 3 squared, a minus 1 squared, a minus 5 squared, we get minus 15 is a times 9, well, times 15 times 15, right? If you look at it, I take 1, 3, and 1, 5 from each pair. That gives me 15 times 15, 15 is cancel. And I get a equals to minus 1 over 15. Your f of x that you wanted here was minus 1 over 15 x plus 3 squared 
x minus 1 squared, x minus 5 squared. So you guys were, your answer was totally like in the right direction if we can just ignore the, the bouncing part of it, right? Your answer was good if we just, just ignoring the, you know, f of x less than or equal to 0. Can you just explain how you got 15, 15 so like Oh, because... Well, there's, there's two threes and two fives here, right? So I can, it's three times three times five times five. So and I, just, oh, I, I just pair them, yeah. Um, but not, it's nothing profound, really. Um, yeah. Well, it better be there because we need to have this going down. So our, our x-intercepts are, 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 you know, minus three. 1 and 5, and it's got to look something like about, oops, <laughs> I didn't need to, I don't know what I'm doing there. I, it may not be that bumpy, but, you know, roughly speaking, the graph looks something kind of sort of like this. Yeah. And there you go, that satisfies the condition f of x is less than or equal to 0, and it goes through the x-intercepts as desired, and it has the y-intercept of, you know, um, minus 15. My graph is obviously not to scale in the x and the y, right? This is just a rough picture. Okay, at this point, um, since you guys wrote your answer, I'm going to skip to problem six, since I got an answer on the board here. Let's see, what was this one? Find a polynomial of degree seven, which has x-intercepts of minus two zero, three zero, and minus eight zero. And turning points of minus two zero and eight zero. What's it, what's it mean turning point? What's that? So I, I, it's just another name for a bounce, right? I mean, a turning point doesn't have to be a bounce off the axis. It could be, a, you know, like a vertex of a parabola or something. It would be a turning point. So, um, so for problem six, so if you want a bounce, right? If you want a turning point, you need an, an even power. So their answers were, so since they want turning points at, at the minus 2 and the minus 8, they do x plus 2 squared or x minus, now that should be x plus 8, right? Because if, uh, if we want the x-intercept at minus 8, we've got to put a plus 8 there, right? So let's make that a plus. Careful. Um, let me make sure that's actually what it was. Now hold on a second. That was not minus 8. That was, so this, this is a typo right here. That's actually an 8, so that makes it minus 8. So you guys were right, just there was a typo here, which was tricking me. So we've got a square for the 2 and the 8, right? The minus 2 and the 8, that's one way. So the, the, we're, the, the problem said find degree 7, right? So the sum of the orders has to be 7. So you can either do a 2, a 3, and a 2, which gives you 5 plus 2 is a 7, right? Or you could put a 4 on the x plus 2, and leave the x minus 3 just first power rather than cube, right? Um, now you have to have the odd power on the middle term, right? Because we're, we're forced in this problem that both, of the, uh, the, both at minus 2 and at 8, they're turning points, right? So it has to bounce there. We're stuck with either a 2 or a 4 or a 6 for the, for the turning, point prop, turning point in x-intercepts, right? And we're stuck with a 3 or a 5 or a 1 kind of things for the other one because we have to have a sum to seven, right? The only way you can get the sum of three things to seven, you have to have at least one of those is odd, right? So um, anyway, these are the choices. You can either do the cube in the middle and squares on the outside, or you can do fourth power, first power, second power, or second power, first power, fourth power. These are three different answers to this question. So this, this problem was challenging more than some of the other questions I asked on the problem sheet because it actually doesn't have one answer, it has three, right? But the graph, <laughs> the graph of all three of these answers kind of sort of looks the same at, at the level of the, uh, <laughs> at the level of my graphing. See, because we've got minus two, three, and, and eight as our um, um, x-intercepts, right? And what, is it, what does it do? It bounces at 2, right? Actually, without further information, I don't think you can even graph it, right? Well, there are many graphs possible, aren't there? So let me show you one. 
So turning point at minus two, right? So it could do like this, right? And then it crosses three, and then it's got another turning point at eight. It could look like that, right? That's one, one interpretation, right? But what's another thing that it could do with the information which is given here? Because I didn't, I didn't say that we had a particular y-intercept, did I? I just told you x-intercepts and their turning points, right? I didn't, I didn't fix a y-intercept like the other problem. So I'll do it in a different color, but you see, we could just as well have had the graph start out positive rather than negative, right? What would it look like then? It'd look a little different, wouldn't it? So we could have done this. It could have had something like that. And there's really nothing fixing that scale. It could be much, you know, shallower or deeper still because I didn't, you know, fix the scale there. Any questions about that? Well, if, if, um, if I wasn't an idiot, I would not put this on a test without giving more information because I don't want to grade a problem that has three correct answers, you know? Okay. okay, this has infinitely many correct answers for the graphing part. Right. So, yeah. So for you, you, everyone should make sure make sure you look at problems ten and eleven, especially. I would, I would. Well, anyway, it's good if you look at all of them. You know, off the top of my head, these are the twelve problems I wrote down. So you could guess the quiz probably will, in some sense, th these are all hard problems, though, right? The quiz will have some. These are moderate to difficult problems. Every last one of them, right? The quiz will have some easier problems for sure. Okay? Yep. How did you get 1 over 15? I solved for A.